Is this visible? Amit? Yes, it's visible. It's okay, visible. So okay, so should I start now? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay, Thank perfect. You. So, yes, so uh, today we are going to discuss uh, Python, which is most likely uh, uh, first part of our discussion. Uh, so, so, let's start. So I am Sudhir. I am currently a data scientist for past six months. Before that, I was uh, in academics, doing a PhD in physics and then postdocs in, in NTU. So, okay, yes. So the first thing, when we, uh, when we plan to design a programming language, the first thing we have to decide is for whom we are designing it. Whether we are, as you can see on, see on the screen, whether we are designing it for a machine or we are designing it for a human. So what does that mean? So that means that you, uh, in the first this thing, if you are designing it for machine, we will make it in a language which is more easy for a machine to understand. And machine understands zero, one, all those kind of like binary things, which is uh, very hard for us to understand. We understand numbers and we understand uh, different languages. So like uh, we understand, we talk in English or Hindi or Bengali. So if the programming language has to be developed, which is close to us, that will be called human friendly. So broadly this way, C, C++, Fortran are more like, a, more like machine friendly languages, which is easier for machine to understand. And Python, MATLAB, and few of others like Perl, they are, uh, that they are much easier for us to understand because sometimes they, they appear to us like uh, 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 English syntaxes. So uh, earlier we used to, hello. Okay, so earlier machines were not powerful. So most likely uh, we used to develop languages which are easier for machines. But right now machines are very, very powerful. So we make it, uh, we choose the language which are easier for us because machines are very powerful, so they, they can anyway understand and that makes, and we choose to make our life uh, easy. So, and in this context, let's discuss uh, Python. Okay, so why choose Python as a programming language? The first reason is easy to learn. If you get started initially, it feels like English language. So if, if you have done programming in C, C++ or any other languages, using Python is much, much easier. That's the first and the most important reason to use Python. Second is open source. You don't have to pay any money, any of that. And you can use or you can contribute. You can make libraries and contribute to Python. You can use it for free. And the third reason would be that it has many, many packages. So these packages are because Python is open source. So anyone can make a library, a package and make uh, uh, like uh, add it to the Python languages. So just because it is open source, it has got so, so many of these packages and which is one of the main strengths of Python. And the fourth would be that it's highly readable. As I said, it sometimes feels like English language uh, syntax. And this highly readable should be appreciated more uh, because we write a program once, but we read it many, many times and by us even, and suppose we transfer the code to others, it has to be read by others. So this readability is very, very important. So that makes code for easy for anyone to understand and reproduce the result if you want. So this would be, I would say that uh, the main um, important strength of Python. So, okay, so let's discuss the contents of the day. So this first part, so, we are going to cover very basic uh, structure of Python. Python is very, very diverse, very, very powerful, but at the same time, easy to get started. But we, are at, uh, we uh, hope that everyone is at, the be at beginner level, so we'll, we'll keep it simple. So first we cover this, these five things, which is using Python as calculator, then list, which is the data structure, then how to do iterative computation with loop and then logical condition functions. These are the core of Python. Python programming language. We will cover this thing, and after that, we will discuss two of the two of the important packages that one has to use a lot, and it we may cover in some other ses session. So, which is more of going into data science. 
so as for now we are focused on python and not going to data science so we will be covering this 5 plus 2 topics today okay so let's discuss uh, how to use python as a calculator that's the simplest way to get started suppose i go to python on on any, ter any terminal or which we will show later and write x is equal to 1 so that x will be my variable x is variable and one is the value here so when i try this this variable x is assigned a value of 1 okay so like you can see here on the left most, most example suppose i want to do some simple addition i will just write x is equal to 2 that means this variable x is assigned the value 2 y is assigned the value 3 and then I do the addition z equal to x plus y. So what happens here is that it takes the x and y's value defined above it, calculates it, and the 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 the, uh, the value which is added is assigned to a new variable z. Similarly, we can go and we can do sub subtraction. So I decide, I said that a is assigned a value four, b is assigned a value two, and c is b minus a. So B is taken as 2 here, A is taken as 4, the value is calculated here and the result which will be uh, minus 2 that is assigned to C. And we don't, we can go to make, we can take a more complicated name of these variables. I can, instead of X or A, I can say it's value 1, value 2 and as you can see I can multiply these values and assign to a new variable, to a new variable which is final value. Okay, so I think the theory is easy to understand, but let's uh, implement it in so that we can see how it's working. This is very simple, but just to get started with here. Okay, let me do one thing. So I, how to assign a value in Python? This is this is Jupyter Notebook. This is one of the most uh, uh, most popular uh, kind of place to do uh, this thing, uh, Python programming. Or for your analysis part, uh, I directly jumped here. But later, if someone has difficulty, I can help in that. Uh, how to get started uh, using Jupyter, which is basically using, which is a package of uh, Anaconda three, which is basically an environment for doing Python. It has all these libraries of Python. But maybe after the talk, I can help you with that if you want to get started with this. So as for now, we will uh, focus on learning Python. Okay, so say I want, I say variable x and then I assign the value 1. To run this, I just do shift enter. Okay, now I have a variable x which is a value 1. Let's see this one. So see this thing, I can print it. Print x. Yes. This is the syntax to print the value of x. And we can see it has printed 1. So it is as expected. Now let's do a simple addition. This is exactly we are going to follow uh, what we I showed on the slide. So I say x is equal to 2, y is equal to 3. So these are the two variables I have defined. And I say z is equal to x plus y. Okay. And to execute this whole cell, this is called a cell in uh, Jupyter. And to execute this means to run this cell, I just do shift enter. And this calculation is completed, which we can see by printing the value of the okay. uh, file. This is all ex on the expected line. Let's repeat it again, just to get more familiar with this. Equal to four, y is equal to two, and z is equal to what? Y minus x. I can print here also. Minus two. Let's do one more thing and then we move to the next topic. Okay, so we did addition, we did subtraction, let's do one of multiplication. x equal to 3, y is equal to 5, and then z is equal to x into y. Okay, here I execute it and I expect the value of z to be 15. So these are very basic mathematics, addition, subtraction, multiplication. You can do it and kind of do more complicated stuff also. So let's do one complicated thing. A is equal to two, B is equal to four, 
c is equal to 3 and b is equal to 5 okay and let's you add something more complicated something value which is a a into b plus b into d by c plus c dash dash a so this is i multiply a by b and then i multiply b by d and then divide by c and then this is c to the power a so this is slightly more complicated than this one and we get this so this is it's kind of uh, example of using python as a as, as a calculator calculator so one more thing i wanted to add that suppose x is equal to 2 and then i write x is equal to x plus 3 what should the value of x so x is equal x is equal to 2 is fine the variable x is assigned the value of q 2 but what is this x is equal to x plus 3 this looks like mathematically this wrong but this is not mathematics this is how the programming language is defined so this is basically what is doing is that first first the, uh, the 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 quantity or the statement on the right hand side of the uh, this equal to is uh, computed so in this statement x is equal to x plus 3 first x plus 3 is evaluated so it takes the value of x equal to 2 then add 3 5 then it assigns the value 5 to x which i can throw by here So the main point to understand is that whatever is on the right hand side of the this equality that is evaluated, and whatever is the value is assigned to the variable on the left side. Okay. So now let's get back to the slide. So okay. So this is very simple introduction to using Python as a calculator. Okay. Now let's move to list. so list there are uh, the one of the really uh, big strength of python is that it has a very enhanced or very like kind of diverse and strong set of data structures and i'm going to discuss only one list which is the most popular one and in most of the analysis that will be sufficient to know list only so as you see in the previous slide i i i wrote x is equal to 1 that means x is a variable that is that is assigned the value of 1 so that means variable x is holding only one value that is 1 okay but suppose i want to hold so many values more than one values in only one variable so as for example suppose you have taken the measurement of weights of people and you want to keep all of them in one variable because that will make my analysis easier as we say see just when we go to the notebook so what i do is to keep so many values in one variable so these are the values from 54 to 64 and weights is the variable so i do what i do is i put a bracket this is square bracket and put all these values separated by commas these are the only two requirement once you put the bracket and then square bracket and then you separate the values by comma if you write this thing now weights is something which is called list so this is called a list in python and this has some basically rank this is rank 0 rank 1 2 is start like this one so we can it's a rank called rank or index so we can somehow uh, get these values using their position also so index is kind of representative of their position so zeroth position first position and the fifth one so so once we keep this values in this list structure we can do a lot of things and 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 let's see how many i mean what kind of things we do we can do with it okay okay so first let me define a variable a weights which is equal to 5473 Forty-eight, ninety-six, forty-five, sixty-four. Okay, I just write these values and I shift enter. So 
weights is a list which i can see by printing that type of list type means shows that what kind of uh, data structure it is you can say it says list so this is now you can always see the data type or the data structure type using this type statement or type command okay so suppose i want to take only this i don't want to use the full list i want to take a set of a few numbers out of this list so what i will do i can do is i want new weights that will be weights and i say 0 to 4 okay so the what this will do is that it goes to the weights this this variable this list and it takes the values which are from 0 to 4 by index so as i said this is index 0 so this goes from 0 1 2 3 4 5 5 but this the doesn't this uh, this is the starting index 0 and 4 will be the ending index so this will go from 0 to 3 whatever you write there it goes to one element before that so if i write 0 5 this will go to 0 to 4 but if i am writing here 0 to 4 this goes from 0 to 3 so 0 1 2 3 so this will pick up this values from the list and this will assign in this new variable which is new weights okay let's show that here okay see so it has started from 0 here and it, since it is 4 it has gone to 3 So zero, one, two, three. Here. Yeah. So this way, sometimes, sometimes this uh, list are very, very big, and we don't want to do the analysis with all of them. I want, I can just select a, a, a new subset from this list into a new list. So this will be again a new list. So this is how to select uh, select a few elements from the original list. Okay. So now suppose that uh, suppose that we make this measurement. and we have this all this weight in our list but we make one more measurement of the weight and i want to add that value in this list so the idea is that uh, one thing i can go and just write the comma and declare it here but sometimes that is not convenient because i don't want to disturb with the original list so i can do is weights append 101 so it takes this list and adds this new value so okay, weights this is the name of the list which is above and this append a new value which is 101 to the list which we can see like here okay you can see that a new value is added so this way i can add another element in my list okay we can do one more thing suppose i want to arrange all this weights in an order because it's, it's, this is not in ascending or descending order we can simply uh, sort it let me put it here okay so you can see this is if i just take the list and call this dot sort which is basically a function so it takes the list and calls this sorting function on the list and we can see that these numbers are all now arranged in ascending order 45 to 48 54 like this one but suppose i don't want uh, them to be arranged in ascending order i want them to be uh, arranged in descending order so i just take weights i put sorting again but i in the bracket i write the reverse is equal to true so what this does is Now you can see if I do this thing, I can reverse, reverse. I can, I, I can uh, get the list in this descending order. So these are the few operations that you can do list on list. There are many, many of them, and this is like uh, list is very, very powerful. And there are so many of like more than hundreds of these functions to play around with that. so that uh, makes our life a bit um, no easier to do analysis let's say one more thing suppose we have 
instead of measuring the weight of all the people in one list we have done separately so i have taken the weights of the female in one one list suppose this uh, yes weights is measured by one person and kept in one list which is weights of female here yeah. or oh, sorry 34 is not possible sorry possible but unrealistic anyway weights of and then here Okay, so I'm saying that suppose we have uh, measured this weight separately by two people. One is measuring the weights of female, and other is measuring the weights of male. And these are kept in two lists: so weights of female and weights of male. And suppose for our analysis, I want to combine this list into one because I now I'm not going to regard a kind of take care of this male or female. So I want to add these values in one list. So that can be simply done by like this. Let me try this. I take weights of female, which is first list, and then I just put addition, and then I put weights of male. Okay, and whatever is this, I give the name combined weights. If I just print the value. i can see these values are appended and these two lists are added first is the female values 34 44 54 and then are the male values 45 55 65 so this is that you have two two separate list just by simply addition as we do with the uh, uh, addition of two numbers i can add two lists also okay let me one put one more thing okay so suppose i have this uh, Take this list only. Declare again. I can just take the value. Just define the values again here, <coughs> so that I don't care about the changes I made. Because when I did sorting and other things that made changes in the values, so just to uh, not to care about them, I just write it again here. So now this is the list weights. with these values suppose i want to add all the add the value of all the elements in the list so i can put the variable name sum of weights this i can simply do is i put sum of weights okay the simple thing i just take the weights name and put the sum over it so this will give me the sum of all the values and it i can do one more thing i just put length of weights i put length and then i give the list name and this will tell me how many elements are there <coughs> in the list okay so now you can see it says 6 1 2 3 4 5 6 So you can see I can add all the numbers in the list, and I can see kind of get the count of the number of elements in the list. So like we saw a, a few functions or the few things we can do with list, but there are a lot more, and basically all of these things make uh, analysis easy, like adding, deleting, or adding or sorting anything. So I think we have a little idea about list now. so we can move to the next thing which is something called uh, iterative computation which is basically done by loops so suppose that i have measured the weights in kilograms which is kept here okay but i now by but i want to this i want to convert these values into pounds now so how to do that so the idea will be because i this is a iterative iterative computation because i am taking 44 i want to convert that to pound and then 73 and then i want to convert this thing to pound and then 60 for all the values so the same thing i have to do for all the values 
so this this is kind of repetitive because for the same element we have to repeat the computation so this is the python code for simply doing this thing so what it does is first i define a list so when i write wait lbs and i just simply put this bracket with no values that means empty list it doesn't have anything zero element this empty list then this is basically a, a loop which is the most common loop in python which is called a for loop so i write this syntax for wait in weights kilograms okay so what does that for means this statement what is does that it goes through all the values in this weight kilograms we can say this weight underscore kilograms is the list name which we want to convert into pounds so when we go through it weight is the a variable name so in first iteration this weight will take the value 54 and then it will multiply 2.2 which is the number i need to convert to pounds and so this will be the new weight corresponding to 54 and then this new value which is in pound for 54 is added into this empty list okay so it's initially this weight underscore lsb sorry lbs it is empty list when for loop goes it picks the value 54 converts into pound and then add into empty list after that weight this variable weight takes the value 73 it takes 73 and then again make the conversion conversion and then new weight is the pound equivalent for 73 and it adds into the this pound list so it keeps going through till it reaches the last value so the last in the last iteration weight takes the value 64 multiply by 2.0 and then gets the uh, weight equivalent in pound and add into the uh, the weight underscore lbs list so let's let's simply see how to implement this in python okay so let me do and see first i define all the weights in kilograms which is 54 73 40 Eight, ninety-six, forty-five, and please feel free to interrupt at any moment you like. Or uh, if I'm going too fast, I mean you can also tell like if you want me to go slow or there's anything you want to be changed. No, I think this is fine. I mean the pace-wise, it's okay, but I think still, uh, I mean, I mean it's quite like C or C plus plus. I think till now. Exactly, exactly, yes, exactly. So I think you can go ahead, like the more we see, we'll have some idea, right? I think somebody okay. has a question. Anybody has a question, you can ask now because it's supposed to be a hands-on. Uh, Sneha, there was a question from Sneha Basu. Suhen mm -hmm. Basu. Anyways, like if you have any question, you can just ask during this one. Otherwise, in the end, I will uh, share all these uh, notebooks with all the code. You can play with it and then, then because once you have some slight introduction, it, it, it will be easier to play with it. And this uh, programming language is always learned by doing it rather than listening. I mean, you have to spend some time getting familiar. That's how we we'll learn it. So, okay, anyway, in the end, I will share the notebook and that should be, I think, better now then. Right, so that would be, that'd be better actually. Okay, okay, sure. So, okay, so let's go get back to the implementation of loop so this is my weights in kilograms the six values which i want to convert into pound so what the first i define all the weights in kilograms and these values are kept in a list here i defined it okay then i say for for is a python keyword that means go through all the values that for means go through all the values in the list for and then i define weight Weight is a variable. I can give any name I want here. That is not restricted because it's not used anywhere. So I, this is just a variable. I can choose X, Y, Z. I can choose my name also. No problem with that. And then say in. In means in the list. 
and then I have to provide the name of the list, which is base program. So what this line does is that it takes, it goes through each value in the list, which is base underscore kilograms. Okay. So as, as I told in the first iteration, weight will take the value 54 here. Value and then multiply this thing by 2.20. It takes the value 54 multiplied by 2.20 and it calculates whatever value it calculates, it assigns in the new this variable which is new weight. Okay, and then simply here I have to define my empty list also in which I want to put my value. So now here new weight is the converted value. Sorry, I have to define an empty list. So this is an empty list. So I have calculated this new weight. I can just put this uh, new weight in the list using append method that we already saw when we were discussing list. So I take the list which is initially empty and append the value new weight. New weight. So what is that? This line goes through these three lines of code, goes through each element in the list convert it into pound and then put in the new list new, which new list is weight underscore lbs okay and i can just print this value LBS. so if you just write this thing in jupyter it kind of prints you, i can also use print here to print this thing this works perfectly works but this is a more of a traditional method but Jupyter is kind of a modern modern platform, so it works without print also. So I don't have to type an extra print. Okay, it works. I can see all these values are converted into pounds now. So let's repeat this calculation and get back to from pounds to go back get get back into uh, kilograms again. So let's do weights. I I follow the same thing. I now I define a new list which we get kilograms and new because i don't want to interfere with the original list okay i define an empty list okay now i say for weight in now i pick the weights from lbs so now this weight will take each value from this list and then say I say my new weight is equal to weight. Now I have to divide it because then I have to go back to that simple transformation. And once I get this value exactly similar to before, and this new value I add, I append it to my list, which is weights kilograms new. New underscore weight. Let me just print the value of weights kilograms new we can see if we have returned to the same value 54 73 48 96 45 64 except i mean this point zero this is basically just a simple thing uh, earlier here it assumes that these are integer because we have not put any decimal number with in this calculation everything is decimal so we thought that is it is a more of a a real number rather than integer okay so we saw these two examples of using for loop there's other loops also while loop but which are not uh, so common this is the most common loop which will be using uh, a lot more time so other things we can explore later okay so let's move to the fourth topic which is using condition okay so anyway in the, so we, like uh, real, we have one question uh, from sure. audience that's uh, list and tuples are the same uh, can't we override the existing list uh, existing list i can override but not tuple so what's the difference i mean i understand they're both like sequential objects right like the it's yes. almost the same as list right what's uh -huh. the difference uh -huh. so difference is i think something like uh, tuple is supposed to be more strict sometimes you don't want uh, like suppose you write a code, but you don't want anyone to disturb the original thing. Okay, 
so you will use tuple because you don't want anyone to disturb the original thing no one can disturb that so use tuple and in uh, list okay let them change it i think that's the reason uh, tuple is very rarely used most of the time you use list so and since tuple is not allowed to uh, change it so it has some uh, other uh, what to say other way like more strict way of keeping it so it's more memory efficient and more computationally efficient to use tuples but again it's less flexible than is yeah, it okay that, that should be sufficient i think yeah that's pretty clear yeah so yeah, but uh, mostly we use uh, list very rarely tuples but i think that we when you go to more of serious competitive programming or like more serious software engineer engineering then i think you use tuples more or like i i, I really can't go on like really comment very not to theoretically and all no i think this this is understandable like uh, so i think you can go on to the next one okay, next sure. topic yeah. okay so now okay so in like real life always we have this if else but so that things also occurs in programming so let's do let's see how to deal with these cases if this is true if this is not true what if happens all this what if but all those cases how to take care of them in uh, in in python so okay suppose uh, weight is i have given a weight which is 70 which is just a number here not list okay and i say that there's a weight limit of 100 okay if the weight is below 100 i say the person is not over it but if the if the weight is greater than 100 i say overweight so how to classify a weight into overweight or not overweight how you implement this thing so this is very simple to the simplest thing is to write this thing on the left hand side so this is if is python statement if and then i write weight which is the number and then less than weight limit okay so if this if the weight will be less than weight limit this statement is true when this statement is true like the the like the true and false of the binary so this thing is always evaluated in binary so here in this case 70 less than 100 so this statement will be true then only we can the the, the program will go to the next line and will print not overweight but if the weight is here 110 this thing will be false and the code will not execute this it won't go to the inside of the uh, inside of the code or whatever the whatever is inside the if block we call it block so you can see this print line is in indented some four spaces inside so this is something called if block so the, the statement inside the block will be evaluated only if the statement is true okay so let's go to slightly uh, one level up you can see on the right so we see we have added an else also so here on the left we had only if but on the right we have else also okay so here the if this statement is evaluated true so say say weight is 70 weight limit is 100 so this will be evaluated evaluated true then it will execute this statement and this will ignore the else part but if this is false suppose the weight is 110 then this will be false it won't calculate do the calculation for this e block but it will do for the else block and it will print not overweight okay i hope hope is clear otherwise it will be more clear when we implement this thing and then i can put the exact number and see it let me just clear it okay so let me define i want my weight is 70 weight of a person is 70 and then i say weight limit is 100 okay now this python i like like if if is a python keyword and then i put my weight is less than weight limit okay then print not over weight okay so till now we are talking about numbers only 
but this is here you can see this not overweight has turned red and this has this two you no know, inverted commas or uh, see this thing so this is basically a string something called text so here 70 and 100 are number but here this is text so python is also very powerful when dealing with uh, text typically the uh, traditional languages which is basically uh, say c c++ fortran the three i have word they are uh, very very poor when dealing with strings so what python has python is much much powerful and makes life really easy when you are do dealing with this text text which is called strings okay you can see i put 70 i put 70 so this statement was evaluated as false so this thing inside was not sorry so it was evaluated true so it printed not overweight but suppose i put 110 sorry zero so i put this thing the weight is not less than weight limit so this statement conditional statement is false it doesn't print anything now let me put the second thing which is else condition we also wanted so i can simply put here and extend this thing else Okay, so as I was telling you about this is whatever you write inside if is basically there's only one line, but you can have many lines. This is called the statement under the if block, and this has to be so if statement has to be ended with this double colon. That's the Python syntax we have to follow. Same similarly, we have this thing under the else. It is something called the statements under the else block. So else has also to be ended with this uh, double columns. Let's repeat this ag again. Hundred. So now we have only till now we have only if. Now we have put else. So we, it can put <coughs> both categories, whether overweight or not overweight. Hundred ten is overweight. I just repeat seventy is not overweight. So I think this is a very uh, entry level. introduction to if conditions and and then there there are also uh, more it gets more and more co complicated you can also combine else with if so something called el if so and this if then it can can get looped and loop so you can have multiple conditions if this is true then do this if not if this is true then do this and like we can have as many if conditions as we want so it's a total completely complete flexibility we have so okay, let's do one more slightly more complicated thing okay so let's do one thing let me first define the weights weights is equal to 54 73 48 96 45 64 so actually we are going to combine all the syntaxes we learned till now into one simple code okay so for this purpose i define my list which is weights okay now i want to split this list into two parts people who are less weight and people who have more weight okay so for this purpose i put a weight limit is equal to 70 Okay, seventy, and then I want to split this list into two parts: people with the weights lower than seventy and people with weight higher than seventy. So for this purpose, I will define two list, two empty list, with C Y and weight high into empty total. Okay, now let's break into two list. So for that purpose, we need to go through. all elements of the list so for that purpose we have to use the for loop so i say for i define my variable weight and i go through weights which is the list defined above okay let me define simple thing let's define x for this x is the variable which will take the value going from 54 to 64 and then i say here i go i have the value of x i say if weight is less than weight limit 
then I add this weight into the low into the list which is weight underscore low okay I just add the value here okay otherwise which is else I say weight underscore high then add into the other list because it is not so if it is not less than 70 it certainly is equal to or higher than 70 so then in that case I add the add, sorry sorry it's not weight now it's always x now because that is my variable name okay. so I simply do this now we can see one thing okay weight underscore low okay see all the numbers 54 it has omitted 73 selected 48 45 and 64 the two values are omitted which should be in high thing high list 73 so you can see that we are in this simple code i have used for loop i have used if condition so these two things we learned or the list also like this list so the main things we learned we have implemented in a very simple code okay so that's a nice little introduction, introduction to uh, for loop sorry if conditions okay okay now let's move to functions so so one thing is that it will be really hard to appreciate function as for now because that is more and more useful if you know write many many like lines of code say if you go for 100 lines or not more than 1000 lines so the code is hard to understand unless it is broken into very small small parts so to break into small parts the small parts will be called function so that, that the idea is to break down the large code into small small parts and that we do by using function so as i written here a large code should be broken into small independent units this makes code much easier to understand much easier to debug to find errors or if i transfer the code to anyone he can understand he or she can understand so okay so let's see how to define a function so this is the three lines from def to return how we define a function so first i read write def this is a python keyword python once i read def python knows that i am going to define a function then I define a function, which is basically, then I have to provide a name for the function that I can call, like people can call me by calling Sudeep. So if the function has to be called, it has to be some name so that I can call the function by name. So I have to provide a name here. So I define the name of the function, which is body mark index. And then there are some input to the functions. You have to provide some input to do calculation and give me some output. So here I have to provide, uh, I, here I am providing two inputs. I can provide sometimes, you don't need to provide any input, sometimes so many inputs. So this, 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 this can be empty here, and this can have like as many as inputs as you want. But here I have given only two inputs, which is weight and height. I provide this thing, and then I calculate BMI. The calculation happens inside the def here. It calculates, it takes, uses the weight and the height provided by me and does the calculation and then returns the BMI. So let's see here. So once I have defined my function, I can just call this function and provide these two numbers, which are basically the two numbers here and just execute it. And then this variable, this number, which is BMI will be given to this variable here. Okay. So I define my function, I call the function by providing, by calling the function with these two inputs and I get my output which is BMI into the variable which is my underscore BMI. So this is, uh, this is how you define a simple function. Let's, let's implement it to see how it works. Okay, so let's define, same thing, first I write def once I write def python knows that I'm going to define a function and then I have to provide the name of the function which will be body which I you can choose anything but I choose it to be body mark index simply we choose the name so that it directly tells 
what the program is doing so otherwise you will forget later what the function is so whenever we declare any variable or any function name it should be as clear as possible so that one can understand by just looking at the name what is this so i can guess that it is by the name that is going to calculate body mass index then after defining my uh, name i put the input well input variables which is weight and height once i done that i have to put this colon again and that tells me that whatever i write below this line will be a part of this function is something or local or global once whatever i write inside it will be a local quantity i can't use it from outside that function so is kind of keeping things local so that you don't have to worry about a lot lot more things so i and then i once i have this input weight and height i can just calculate bmi is equal to weight divided by height square so which is height into height okay then i just say that once i call the function i want to return the output to be bmi which is this value once i shift enter and now i have this function ready okay so let me call this function which is body mass index i provide the name to call the function then i put the values so i am going to put 65 first weight has to be in kg and then height has to be in centi sorry meter okay so this will directly call the function okay let's see what is that okay it has directly printed the value so in many cases i don't want to print the value whatever so this has returned the value bmi for the weight and height of these two values but and directly printed it but if i want to use that value and put in other variables i can just uh, take the value take the return output in a variable which is my underscore bmi okay i have to print it okay here now let's say that okay 70 kg i can say is increasing yes so this is very uh, very simple example of a uh, function now now let's write slightly slightly complicated function so that and this is basically going to combine a lot more okay yes let's write this and then we see how it works so okay let's again i'm going to define def okay so what i'm going to do is that here in this function we calculated only bmi so we know that we categorize bmi into four categories which is obese overweight normal underweight so now i want to calculate bmi and then tell me my bmi and which category i am in so i'm going to write a function for that so def i again use the name body mass index and then i provide the weight and height i okay this is same as earlier and then i calculate my bmi which is basically weight by height i can use square like this okay and then i return bmi but that's it later okay first i don't want bmi i want bmi and the category which category i mean so the standard is that if bmi is greater than or equal to 30 i say the category is obese okay here okay so this takes category if the bmi is greater than 30 so if bmi is 30 this statement will be executed and we get the category value obese and whatever i'm going to write below that those uh, those statements will be disregarded because the first condition is true okay but now write l if okay so what this is the okay, bmi is equal to okay, so let me write and then i explain it okay 
so if bmi is not greater than equal to 30 then certainly it is less than 30 and if that happens then we come to else l if which is between else is a combination of else and if so if this condition is not true then it comes here and then ask else if bmi is greater than 25 then category is overweight so if bmi is greater than 30 this first condition is true and then it ignores these two lines if it is less than 30 then only it comes to this third and fourth line l if and category and if this second condition is satisfied which is bmi is greater than 25 then it uh, says that category is overweight we can again extend it and say if this both condition are not, not true and if this condition is true here okay and then if we have to put this column here then i say my category is normal normal okay normal okay. third category if the value is greater than or equal to 18.5 but less than 25 because if it is greater than 25 the second condition will be satisfied and it won't come to this third set of statement okay and then if this all three conditions are not satisfied then you put else if all this category are not satisfied you just say category is under weight okay and after that you just return bmi and category okay so in the uh, earlier function we return bmi only and we can see here i can return more than one output so i am returning bmi and the category both okay beautiful i'm going to see here so this okay that it won't be it has this colon has to only after this if or else if or for or def not after this statement okay now i have to call my but i have to call this function body math index using the two values i want which is 65 65 kilograms and 1.64 meter okay but now we want to i put my bmi which will take the value of the bmi returned by the function and then my that big okay okay let me print those values both values okay print my bmi my category okay okay so it says 24 and it is normal so we can say if if it is greater than 18.5 but less than 25 it has to be a normal category so suppose i increase my weight to 68 okay it goes into category of overweight now we can see it 25 so this condition is satisfied we can simply increase maybe put it 80 or oh, still overweight because it's 29 okay then you can see okay now it has gone to over you can see this bmi is now uh, 30 so it has got into this category okay so this is another uh, slightly more complicated example of function but i think you got the uh, initial or basic idea how to write function and how to use it so you can see that i don't need to change anything here once i have defined my function i can just call it as many days as many time as i want and just provide the new values i don't have to go and disturb this function and the whole calculation of bmi stays within this within this block within this function so it's uh, easier to in, uh, interpret or easier to understand this a uh, code okay so now i think Okay, so I have covered the main. Okay, so this is this all five things we discussed till now. They are all uh, part of core Python programming language, or uh, like this. Like uh, so and then, as I told earlier, the real strength of Python lies uh, within this. Not the packages. There are so so many packages that uh, that uh, that make our life easy when we are doing analysis. so we don't have to write explicit for loop 
or kind of reduces the the kind of computation we need to do for in our analysis so one of them is pandas which is uh, like really really helpful and much much more helpful when one is doing data science i think uh, more than 80% time we are playing with pandas so in data science the general perception is that there's a machine learning deep learning and all but most of the time you will be dealing with this pandas so pandas is mostly you can say is uh, so did we have a question in yes. the chat box it's before you go to the next topic sure sure uh, can we put input value endlessly after completing the command or i should write it again uh, the, the you do you don't need to change the function am i getting the question right no. i think what he means is Maybe he can uh, unmute and ask directly. It's possible. Yes. Sure. Yes. Understand? Can you unmute yourself? Uh, okay. So he's. I think he's is fine with that. So you can. Okay. He he got it. So I think Sudhir, you can switch to the next one. I mean, this is more okay. interesting because I understand till now more or less these ideas are uh, reiteration from C or C plus plus and. Uh, just the syntax is very different right so uh, there is any syntax library just uh, no there's no syntax library but actually i have my own uh, notebook which has the collection of all possible i mean at the practical level all the syntaxes kept in one notebook like the notebook i'm using to uh, whatever discuss here so you can directly look the syntaxes there i have made a collection for myself so i think that should be useful i can share it later right right uh -huh. yes because yes it is i mean but anyway python is like very very popular and there are like maybe thousands of tutorials on youtube or anywhere no no that's perfectly fine so i i think you can switch to the next one yeah so just to add into that the function thing i passed only two numbers weight and uh, this thing weight and height you can pass as many as they want and instead of this number you can pass a list you can pass a tuple and you can pass a function itself so you write a function and as the argument in input you can pass another function so it's very very kind of flexible and very very powerful okay so i think i have slightly clarified on that so yes this pandas is the excel for uh, for python it is very very flexible it's like really the place to do i mean the software to use for data analysis so you can understand you can see it's called data frames and i have put one example of data frame here okay so what this is this this, this will look exactly like excel sheet to you but the good thing is that since it's the part of python so you can uh, use this is in a programming language you don't have to do like by hand or by visually all the time so excel like feature but in a programming language and that you can put for loop if condition and all those features on this kind of excel sheet you say okay so this is the data frame here what is shown on the screen so first this is the data for rain okay in some town i don't know so this is can see there the 12 rows so this is the uh, data of uh, rainfall for 12 months it says that and over some historical duration they say last 30 years so the first column is what is the average value what is the average of the highest rain rainfall in that month so it's average high what is the average of the lowest value what is the highest value in this 40 or 30 40 years whatever for that particular month and what is the lowest value and this average precipitation so you can see all this data is kept in this uh, excel kind of thing so basically these columns are called features features means something that describe your system so we are using rain here so my rain understanding of rain will be described by average high value average of low value record high or record low so all those are characteristic or the feature 
that describes rainfall for this 12 month okay and let's once we have this i think let's see some features how uh, in basically in code how to use this uh, pandas and how helpful it can be for doing analysis okay do i have the give me a moment i am not sure i have the file here i need a file okay where the box is okay okay so now i am going to uh, show some important features of pandas okay so pandas is not a, a core python thing it's a library so we have to first call it okay so i say import pandas spd uh, we can directly call pandas but we say spd because that shortens the name because we have to use it a lot more time so we will use a nickname or the short name for the libraries for the library panda i just call it panda here i just do shift enter and now i have the pandas library in my jupyter notebook to work on okay now you can see how to open this so i say I write df which is basically data frame and i say call panda panda by pd so i call panda i say read csv and this is basically my data file okay so i call pandas i tell pandas that you have to read a csv file csv file means comma separated values where the values are separated by commas i can show you the file okay you can see this is the raw data file january february up to december and these values and you can see all the values are separated by comma so this is one of the format to keep data and this is the most popular format i don't know why but this is the most popular format that is in data science in the data science community so yes so this is the file and i open the file i provide the file file name which is weather.csv open with panda and all the contents of the file will be in this name variable name which is df which is called data frame because the whole thing is data frame we can give any name also also i can give one x or like say maybe so there anything anything but typically we write it df that shows me its data frame so it's make easy to read okay df okay so now my whole once i execute this line i have my whole data in df and we want to see it okay if i write df dot head so this is a data frame i call head a function on that and this will show me the top five rows of the data top five rows okay here yeah. if i don't put any number you can see more than five if i write 10 it will tell me it will show me 10 10 rows okay so we can by using this head dot thing i can look at what 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 data sheet i have what data frame i have so suppose i instead of the head i want to look the bottom five rows if i don't find put any number df dot tail it will show me tell me from the below so you can see it will uh, show the below five rows of the data frame so you can see that okay lowest is december so it picks the last last five the from the below and you can see here df dot if i don't put anything it picks the top 5 then wait to february so this is one way to look at the i mean just look at the data file what contents are there we can look at the columns okay and one good thing is that very useful method is that i take my data frame and i say describe my data frame to me i said this is my data frame give a description of the data frame so this will give me some statistical description of the data frame okay so just it will directly count how many the count will tell how many values i have for this particular feature what is the mean value what is the standard deviation what is the minimum value maximum value all those things so in just one line we can get a uh, mean because as say, say mean value and standard is very common we do it in 
any analysis. So just one line, I can get mean, any standard deviation, any max, all those quantities very readily of all my features, which are basically average, high, average, low, up to average 50%. It's, I don't need to calculate anything. I just call the method describe and it tells me all this detail. It can go further and can go give us more and more high level information, but it's uh, good to start with mean and standard deviation. Okay. So suppose I, okay. Suppose I don't want, okay. So this is the whole data frame. And basically, as I told you, this, 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 these are called features. So sometimes when you do analysis or like machine learning, we don't want to consider all the features. I want to select the few important ones. Suppose I decide that I want to take only average high, average low. I don't want to consider because if you, if you consider more and more features, it's more and more computationally uh, not expensive to do it. So suppose I want to take only these two features. So I say BF may be short. And I, what I, okay, this is the new data frame I'm describing. And I take my data frame, I write this way, and then I write average high, okay, and then average low, okay. I compute this thing, okay. Okay, so see, if I want, don't want to consider all the columns, means all the features, I want to consider only two features, I can just write this thing, and I have a new data frame which has only two columns. I don't need to worry about this and then I can do analysis. So these are some, this one. Okay, we can do one more thing. Okay, so let's remove this in for now. It's not important now. This is how to select the rows. Let's remove this also. Okay, if you want to run everything in one go, you can just write kernel restart and run all. So this is, if I want to individually run a cell, I do shift plus enter. But if I want to, if I do this kernel run all, it will run all the cell, the whole code. Okay. Let's see how another feature of this. Suppose, let me write, suppose I want to add these two columns, average high, average low into a new value. Sometimes just like you want to add all the values to columns to have a new feature. So let's write average, sorry, average of, sorry, sum of high, low. Okay. Let me first try and then decide what's happening. DF, average, high, and average, low. Let me first try something here. Okay. So what I said that suppose I want to add these two columns and get another column which these two corresponding values added. 79 added to 59, 77 added to 57, 58 added to 42. And this kind of scenarios will occur very commonly when we are doing analysis. The two values I want to add them and reduce it to one value. So to do this, I just take data frame the name, I select this column, average high, I select the other column and just write plus between them and give the new name I want for the column. So see, and it will create a new column. So this column is a new column which adds the values from corresponding rows of average high and average low. These are again some functions which is quite useful when going for analysis. We can do one more thing. Let's say, say, say I want to, say I want to multiply all these values by two. Okay, so you can do one thing. I just take the column, which is DF. Okay, first I write to data frame, which is DF, and then I have to select the column name. Average precipitation is the column name, and that we have to put in this uh, inverted commas. Precipitation. So let's see how it's happening. 
see if i just write i take this data frame i take this particular column and multiply by 2 so all the values will be multiplied by 2 this kind of data transformation we can do using this simple one or two line one line commands okay okay let me let me see what other interesting thing we can do with it okay so okay, let me again uh, remove this things which are not important so we can do something else. Okay, let me just run again. So okay. Suppose I want to find what is the no 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 let, 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 give me a moment. Okay, so suppose I want to sort this sort this array i can sort this uh, sorry not array data frame i can sort this uh, data frame by any particular column i want so suppose that i want to sort this thing using record high column so let's do this thing then it will be more clear how it's happening so first sorry i take my data frame and then i say sort by values this is the Python, uh, sorry, pandas command, and then I have to put by which column I want to sort it. Okay, I can do this thing. I can see. So I this data frame, if I want to sort it by one particular column, which is record high, I just do this thing. I take the data frame, I call sort values, provide the column name, and you can see this new data frame here is sorted according to record high. So it starts from 73, 74. Here, so again, these things are kind of things are uh, very useful in doing analysis. We want to have these things ordered in ascending or descending order. So one has to simply write these simple commands, and this will be uh, kind of done. If you use explicit methods in C, C++, or if I use some Python and uh, sorry, uh, for loop and if condition, this will be like many many lines of code, and which is basically those, those mini lines of quotes are now behind the screen. So one can directly use this in this pandas package so that we don't have, uh, don't have to invest a lot of time and uh, worry about bugs. So, okay, so I think this is some few features about pandas. I, I showed you very basic things, but it is like, I don't know, it's like maybe 100 times more powerful than I showed here, but it's, as is like introductory level, so very hard to go to some more and more uh, abstract, uh, sorry, uh, advanced levels. But we can do that if maybe in next session if we like. Okay, so also if you good to know that once you know that be familiar with pandas that this is the uh, library to do analysis, one can just like always explore by stack flow or like Google and then do it. It's very very easy to use. Okay, let's, okay, so Lumon, this very important package of Python is this matplotlib, which is used for visualizations. So you can look at this kind of plots like histograms or the line plot of the pie charts or other visualizations. This is also very, very easy to make in a Python using this libraries, which is the main visualization library for, uh, for Python. So let's have a slight little bit, little introduction to that. We won't be able to uh, cover that in detail, but let's have a little bit, at least one or two picture to get familiar with that. Okay. That's all. I'm removing this panda. And let's have a little introduction to visualization. Give me a moment. Okay. Okay, so as I saw that here to do this analysis, okay, let me clean again. Okay, so to this analysis, we have to import pandas again. So I import pandas as pd. There's another library we need to import, which is numpy, which is used for 
more most of the numerical calculation in python i call this numpy as np and then for visualization you have to use matplotlib so i call this in import matplotlib basically and you have to do this pyplot which has some library uh, matplotlib has some other extensions also so i extends i call this extension and i call by this name plt okay okay i think let me just write one more thing you don't need to understand this but let me just write this is just to make it easier to visualize okay so as earlier i have called a data stream i have to use some data to do the visualization so i call uh, another data by using the same pandas as we saw earlier so this my df is data frame i call panda and then i use the read csv function to read my data which is immigration and to canada dot csv now the data is read in the df i can see what is in the data file okay so this is this is this is a uh, data of immigration from different countries to canada in different year so you can see these are the countries name from which immigration happened to canada in years going from 1980 to 2012 i guess here it has been 2013 i guess 2013 yes so this is the data which you are going to use for visualization okay if you want to understand how many rows and how many columns are there in the data frame you can just just simply call df dot shape that will give me the idea about the uh, the shape of the data frame so this data frame has 194 rows and 39 columns okay okay first i will do some simple calculation with uh, simple modifications perhaps you don't need to understand that okay i will just do simple thing. so i just put df set underscore index entry in place i have to make this change it here let me first write and then tell what i'm doing list map string So basically, what I did here is that here we we'll need to understand this part. Here is that I put I took all these values, all the year values from 1980 to 2013. So these are the name of the year. I put all the names in one list. You can see here. Okay, so this is basically years is basically a list which contains all the years that are in my data frame. So that using only variable uh, variable years, I can uh, get the data of all these years which are in this list. So this is just so so that uh, to easily take the data out, I don't have to put the year value again and again and again. Okay, so now let's plot the. line plot okay so let me just okay so in this jupyter notebook i am doing programming only some writing code you can write some notes also but for that you have to go to shell and then instead of code which is default you have to select markdown once you write markdown you can write notes in line plot it's just like this one okay so you can do one thing you can do code you can write notes so this is very good i mean way to uh, keep track of your code so let's plot the immigration from one particular can country which is basically haiti so to do that now look at my data frame again let's have a look at here here so this is the data frame 
I have the country name here and I have all the years uh, for which the immigration happened here in this different uh, columns from 1980 to 2013. Okay, so once I want to plot for Haiti, so what I do is I take a name, say I say give me the data frame for Haiti and then I take the uh, call the uh, data frame name which is df and say df dot then go to a particular location block miss location and which location and then say location I provide Haiti so this goes to data frame which is df it goes to a location Haiti and then so it picks the row Haiti which is sometime below and um, should be somewhere here. Um, I'm showing top five, but it should be somewhere in the middle. So it picks the row Hathi and then it picks once write the call years, it will pick the columns which are years. So it will pick the column from 1980 to 2013 because that is what I'm writing here. Okay. 1980 to 2013 in a list. So here I am getting the data for country Haiti and for the columns years, which is 1980 to 2013. Okay, so all this data is in here. You can see here. Okay, now you can see plotting here. I got the data only for Haiti and for all these years. Okay, so so this is matplotlib want the data in a certain format for plotting. So we have to make a little change. Let me first make the change and then I say DFIT, give me the transpose of it. So I take, take the data frame DFIT and I call the transpose function on that. And let's see what is done. DF underscore underscore square. Okay. So as simple as that. So I take the data, you can think of the matrix, give me a transpose of that. So this will give me a transpose like this one matrix matrix transpose and i am doing this because matplotlib want my me to input data in this format for plotting it has to be support I mean it has to be uh, given in certain certain particular format so that it understand what is what is x axis what is y axis okay now plotting is very simple so you can see my data frame is now df healthy transpose okay so for plotting, I just simply take df at the transpose. I, this is my data frame name. I just say go call plot function on that one. Plot, and then I say I want line plot. So I say kind is equal to line. Okay. See, simply one line, you can plot this thing. Just take the data frame, call for plot function, which type you want. It does that simple, simply, okay? Maybe we can do some fancy thing. Suppose I want to add a title to this thing. So I call PLT, which is basically, if you look at that, PLT, which, which is basically the matplotlib, okay? So I say that call matplotlib, this thing, and give me a title. So I say dot title, I write immigration from Hathi, okay? Do this thing. See, it has been outtitled. You can add the uh, can add X level present years, and then I want a Y level, which is number of immigrants. Okay. You can see very basically just just only one line of plotting, and then other details we can provide simply so three four lines we have the uh, good enough plot to go you can see that once you have the data frame it's uh, very easier to do visualization plotting also so this is quite quite useful i mean there may there are other softwares also but uh, i think this is one this is one of the good ones also Okay, let's do one more kind of plotting. So we have this thing, uh, it is called line plot because it's a continuous line. Suppose I want to put a bar chart. Sometimes we need different kind of plot. So suppose I want to plot a bar chart instead of line plot. 
So let's see how we do this. So now for that purpose, we take the data flow for Iceland. So I say df underscore ice, which is Iceland. And then I take my data stream and I go to location. Now I will go to Iceland and then go to year. So this will give me data for Iceland for all these years 1980 to 2013. You can just plot here and then see. See, again, you see here. So, first we have to make that. Sorry, just take the transpose of it. So, DF underscore I. Because that's not required. Okay, now let's see how to do this, how to get this bar chart. So I say my take my DF ice underscore tram with transport. Sorry, sorry, transpose, and then I plot and I say I want a bar chart. here okay six size you can you can put six size and you can have as many like width and height you can increase so i say width i want 10 height i want six okay now you can see now we have a bar chart where we have uh, the number of immigrants from iceland to canada for different year so you can see this again using two three lines of Code, we can get a useful plot for our analysis. So the I want to stress is that Matplotlib, the Python library, which is really kind of very useful and very easy to do this plotting and all. Okay, so there are so many other things you can do, but I think I have given a kind of okay kind of introduction. And there is like thousands and thousands to play around with this. So I suppose uh, I will, uh, you can play with that. I mean, you can start playing with the notebooks I will send you and then uh, keep learning from maybe YouTube or uh, on, on the Stack Overflow and all. So I think I'll stop here. Thank you, Thank Sudhir. You I, I think it was quite useful. I mean, okay. these parts are bit, I think, uh, we'll go through this recording. We have a recording for everything. So I, I think we need to run it, uh, in our console so that, uh, we can, we can clarify on the, uh, on the exact how to use the syntaxes and libraries. Yes. And we'll definitely get in touch with you. I, I think we can have a short question answer session. If anybody has yeah. a doubt, they can ask, I mean, I, personally have a lot of doubts but i think i'll clarify them in a personal level <laughs> but uh so anyone has any question they can just drop it in the chat box nothing as such okay sure sure so okay. Anyway, I I will uh, send all these um, files. I mean the syntaxes I typed. I have every already typed with me for reference. So I will right. send the notebooks. So Python and the pandas thing. Uh, I think I covered everything there. But Matplotlib I just covered. I think two out of six or seven examples I have. So you can have look at the uh, the examples there. You can play with it. And I have other Python materials on GitHub for which I will give the link. So you can just keep running there and keep learning. It's the only way I have to learn by you know, playing with it. Okay, I, brilliant. Yeah. So there, I have a question from Manotos. Sure. Yeah. How do someone, uh, how do someone save data in a file? Okay. So this is very uh, sim simple. So once do you do analysis, you just, I think the command is write df dot to CSV, it just says that. Okay, okay, okay. I, I'm sharing my uh, screen now. Wait a minute. 
So my screen is still sharing. I'm sharing it. Okay. Yes, please. Okay. So let me show you. Okay. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Sorry. How to save data in Pandas? Okay, this is how you do it. Always go to Stack Overflow. I know it's df dot two csv, but let's confirm it. Okay, this is df dot two pickle, which is more of a advanced one because it saves in some I think binary format and all. But Okay, I still don't have here, but it's something called df dot two underscore csv, and you give the file name, and it will save the data frame there. So this can convert it to different file uh, settings, like I can choose the file format I need. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yes, you can save the data frames in binary format also, which is much, uh, uh, no, less storage intensive. So you can do that thing. I, I always use it. df.2 csv. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. This is how you save it. Yes. So I used too many data frames. Like I started df equal to pd.csv. That was to read it. So suppose I want to save the uh, hathi transform. So that was df underscore hathi underscore tron. Tran. I go to that and then I put dot two underscore csv and then just in the bracket I put the file name. Exactly the same thing that I saw, that we saw there, will be saved exactly as it is. So yes, we do analysis. So of course, we want to save the analyzed and the more you now the cleaned file in the format we want. We can save it here. Mm, I don't see any other question. I have a very naive question. I mean, it's just it is, the just one minute. It's Monothos from our batch. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Monothos from our batch. Yeah. Yes, yes, go on. Yeah, so I have a very naive question. That is, uh, like, in, in console, how do you call this? Uh, like, because, because I understand, like, you are not using Windows, right? Yes. So I tried to actually call this, uh, this yes. file, the file, the test file you sent. And so I'm not being able to do that. So is Okay, that... so, so, yes, yeah, let me jump in. So first thing you installed Anaconda, Anaconda for Python 3. Okay. Right. So once you install this thing, I think there were in the windows you have on the left below, we have this something called start or control. Huh? Yes. Go there. And then from there you launch Anaconda. Okay. Yes. Perfectly fine. Okay. Perfect. Once you launch there, there will be some, I think some seven, eight tabs. One of them will be Jupyter notebook. Okay. Okay. From Anaconda Navigator, it will take the full screen and there will be so many things, file lab and all. You click Jupyter Notebook. Once you click on the Jupyter Notebook, you can go to any directory you want. So you can go to the directory, which we have, you have kept your file and just open that file. Oh. And, and, and that, sorry, and that file will open in browser. Hmm. So oh, it see, needs to open in a browser, right? It will, it, it will directly open in a browser. You can see here, I am also yes, doing yes, all yes, this yes, yes. in the browser. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is not the earlier thing we used to write course on a terminal and then mm -hmm. no, run in that. It's more interactive. So that's what it's called. It's called Jupyter Notebook. It's like notebook. You are doing analysis and then you're writing comments. So this is very useful. So I, understand. Understand. I have been trying in Jupyter prompt apparently. I am no. like Anaconda prompt. No, 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 don't try that. So you open Anaconda navigator from control panel and right. then open Jupyter notebook and then go to the directory, whatever directory you want. Hmm. Okay. Because hmm. I'm also using that for reference. So right. I was using my brother's laptop, which is Windows. Doing that. So okay, if you if have any difficulty, you can let me on the call and then. Yeah, sure, sure. Very I, easy. I can do that uh, at the personal level. So, anyone else has any other question? Because I think, uh, like, Sudhir put in a lot of time into this today. Thank you, Sudhir. I mean, like, yes, it's very one more useful. Thing. Okay, let me put one more thing. I don't know. Okay, so other things maybe we can capture later machine learning and data science. Right. Okay, but I just think that if you want to have more uh, Python materials, you can see here. 
this is my github page mm -hmm. and actually i have uh, as you i was telling you that all these syntaxes i have kept in one one jupyter file so i mean this has kind of everything there so you can directly have the file here on my github page and refer to that brilliant we'll do that and i i just have one more thing that is like uh, frankly because the reason to actually name this workshop as a career outreach is because we actually want to give a flavor to the students that what it what would it feel like to become a data scientist like many of our students are from physics mathematics okay, and sure, all sure. that yes yeah, sure, so, sure perfect perfect yes i have one more question also from another student Okay, so uh -huh. so should I answer this part or answer it later? Yes, 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 please, like go ahead. Okay, so so I mean my context is different because I have done PhD, then three, four, four, five years of postdoc, and then moved. So now I have my different sets of reasons. My reason would be that to put in very simple one line is that I didn't want to do uh, you know more of abstract theory and all. So I wanted to move to something which is more of applied. But it still carries the flavor of science. So, and this, as we know, that this field kind of really came up to some good level in 2015-16 and all. So, I think it came the right time. Of course, I started learning it late. So that was my reason. So, if you want to do science and then, uh, but on a more applied level, so that thing, data science is a good one. Uh, academically, I think uh, I'm fine. Uh, I feel more happy. Doing data science rather than my uh, uh, the physics thing that I enjoyed in PhD, but not so much after that. So that would be my uh, main, I think, reason. And the things uh, if you want to learn to know in detail how to move to data science, I think this this guy from NTU Singapore who did a PhD there, and he has written a very good article here. So I would suggest to read this thing. How I moved from physics to data science. And uh, kind of things you need to know to be in data science is like have to know a very good, have understanding of statistics, and then you know to need to have a knowledge of, of programming. So mostly right now it's Python and R, but as everyone is saying, the Python is going to be, I mean, it's kind of leading the race now. Earlier it was R, but right now it's Python. So I think it's good to for uh, learn programming in Python. Machine learning is very very important. But you don't use it so often, in because I said, and also you don't use much uh, now very complex levels or like suppose deep learning and all so basic machine learning which is linear regression and logistic regression. So 90, 95 percent of data science works. I mean, data scientists work with that. So yes, although it's a big name and one should know it, but I don't think it's, it's just five or ten percent of your work. Mostly. Analyzing the data, looking at the statistics, and putting whatever intuition you have. So basically, I wanted to correct the impression that machine learning. Everyone says that machine learning is data science. It's not true. It's just one one part of it. Maybe it's just ten percent of data science. Another thing you need to know is domain knowledge. That is something that if you want to do research in physics, I need to know about physics models. So same thing if you want to work in healthcare or you need to work in finance then you need to have a domain knowledge and uh, that will come only when you start working there so it's hard to get from outside so, but if you want to move into this thing i think it's good to focus on uh, statistics programming and machine learning technically these things things to, to be learned yes that's all great yeah thank you sudhir mm -hmm. yeah so I think we're almost closing today's uh, like time. Uh, Are there a question there on the chat box? Or to move on? There is one, but I think it's resolved. But you can still pick it up. At the very beginning, you imported uh, NIMPY but did not use it though. What is it about? Yes, exactly. Because something like say, okay, actually, I picked up because I, I didn't know which example I'm going to use. Okay, so it's called NumPy. So 
NumPy is you can say is is a math is doing mathematics for Python. So Python has a dedicated library for doing mathematics. Suppose you are doing uh, matrix multiplication. Okay, so you the one thing is that you can just run a for loop, pick one element from this array A, from matrix A, pick this element from matrix B, multiply it and give it to me. That's one thing, which is, which is very raw. So NumPy is you just write NumPy A dot B. So that will do the multiplication, the matrix multiplication for it. So these kind of things, like no, anything you can think of mathematics. Is uh, Python does uh, Python has a dedicated library which is basically NumPy for it. It's called numerical Python. That's the full name of it. Numerical means play with numbers. Yes. So we have slight confusion because in, when we most of us have evolved. Uh, some programming in Fortran and C. So we think in terms of language, uh, sorry, in numbers only, but Python is not that. Python has, is a more general. So one particular the numerical thing is kind of assigned to NumPy. It's a numerical Python. I hope it's clear. Sir, I have a question. Yes, yes. Sir, I think Matplotlib calls the, the NumPy library internally. Is it no, right or wrong? Uh, I, I don't think so. You can check, try. Okay, that's a very good question. Okay, let me also learn. I don't know. I don't think so it's required. Okay, let me remove this thing. NumPy, let me remove pandas also. Okay. Some, if it's, if it's, okay, let me clean also so that we don't have anything hanging from our last code okay yeah it's running if if it is calling internally it's calling internally then we don't no, no need to provide it i think it might it may need it because but it is doing internally it's calling importing by itself so we don't need to put for that purpose but anyway we can uh, we can simply do the matrix multiplication very hard for me to understand type you please Okay, let's let's take two three more minutes and then insert cell below. Okay, I, I forgot it, how to uh, define because we also don't remember everything. It's very hard to remember all the syntaxes. Import numpy. Let's define a matrix A, which is numpy dot array. Okay, and then one comma two and maybe three comma four. I think this has to go inside. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Okay, then insert A, which is yeah, perfect. So this is how you define an a, a matrix in uh, in in Python. So I say give me numpy and define an array, which basically define matrix with the four elements. First row is one, two, second row is three, four. You can simply define B. Again, summary and P array. Okay. Sorry, I have to go inside and then maybe like five comma six, nine comma ten. Okay, now we have two two matrices. Okay. Now I give me C is equal to NP dot dot, I guess. A sorry, A comma B. Okay, and after that, see. Okay, yes, perfect. So here, I define an array. For that purpose, I need NumPy. If I don't define NumPy, it won't work because I have using here NumPy. So I have to import it. I I call NP and I define a two by two matrix one two three four. I define other matrix B, which is again a two by two with the element five six nine ten. And I say np dot dot. So this basically does the matrix multiplication. So I say a multiply by b and give me the multiplied matrix c. You can see, you can verify it. Yes. So that's good. Thanks for this question. We forgot to see a little bit of NumPy also. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, nice. So, uh, uh, is there any more questions? Because we are almost closing this session. So, 
we definitely like to have more from you, uh, Sudhir. I mean, like whenever you have some time to get it yeah, for transfers. Certainly, certainly, I have time, but uh, my brother is leaving, so I need another laptop to for referencing. So that it is, is perfectly okay. So we'll discuss it. Certainly, I thought, as I told in the first few slides, that this is the first part. I did, we didn't move into data science, so and that itself is, I think, uh, more than one hour of discussion topic. So uh, about that. Um, I take the raw data and go to the modeling. So they take the data, do some analysis, do cleaning, some transformation, and how to put in a machine learning model. So we can do that. I have the materials ready for it. Or we can have a theoretical session on machine learning, like just describing the theory and uh, the, the machinery behind it, rather than going to implementation. We can discuss it on, 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 on a private call. Right. Brilliant. Yeah, Sudhir. So thank you so much, Sudhir. I mean, like, uh, this has been a very enriching and like, for me personally, it's very useful because I, I personally want to use these tools into my research and definitely it would be very intriguing for the students, I understand. Sure. So we'll interact more on this one. I'm so sorry, like there was some technical problem with my computer, I think, but I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you particularly for your time and your very busy, I understand that. And uh, like the organizing committee, our patron, our uh, professor, uh, Falguni Mukhavadai, who is our honorable principal, sir, and chair, Dr. Gautam Mukherjee, sir, who is the HOD in physics in BC College. And the secretaries for this program is uh, Su Dr. Sudip Turai and Dr. Swamin Chakraborty and joint secretaries, Ajay, uh, Ajay Kumar Sarma and Apurva Paramani. We are actually picking up from uh, earlier uh, program on the international career outreach, which mm -hmm. happened in June. So we were trying to get more and more exposure, like so that the students and uh, like us also, we get more and more exposure to the like highest level of the technologies that like state of art that is coming up. Sure. So frankly, like Sudhir and I go way back 10 years, we did masters together and so they eventually moved into his PhD in IMSC and postdocs from USA and then NTU in Singapore. And then he did several of this data science courses. So, so they thank you. And I, I look forward to uh, having you again in some sure. of our programs. And sure. you do understand like some of our students may actually reach out to you to- oh, Perfect, perfect. I, I, I would like that. Consultation, yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. So I would suggest that keep playing with it. Uh, because uh, I learned Python three times and I forgot. Fourth time I learned and I started using it. So that's the only way. If I stop now and I don't use for six months, I'll forget it. So the, one, the only way to learn it is keep using it. And now feel free to, I mean, reach out to me or Amit and for anything. Get it started, whether it's Python or data science or machine learning or whatever you like to ask. I'll be happy to answer. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Sudhir. Welcome. So Welcome. I think you also take a break uh, because I think you're constantly talking for last two, two hours. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it'd be like, we'll, we'll talk soon again. And uh, yes. thank you everyone so for being such a nice audience. We'll speak soon again. Okay, Sudhir, you do take care. I'll speak to yes, you soon again. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank Bye. You. Take care. Bye-bye.